you know? and he these these killers mistake him for some some important guy, Somebody and he's getting else, chased yeah. across country trying yeah, to avoid yeah. these people that he doesn't even know mm-hmm. uh, anything about. So he gets led to the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they, they start. It's a great scene, though. It starts <laughs> yeah. out with him getting uh, in the middle of nowhere. He gets off mm-hmm. of, uh, gets off a bus, I think. Yeah. Or another guy gets off a bus, and yeah. and oh, uh, you know, he gets off a bus, and there's a guy waiting across the street. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't know if this is somebody he's supposed to meet. If this guy's in on it, mm-hmm. and then he just waves at him. And you're right, there's an old guy. He comes up, and he's like, "Yeah, kind of hot today," or something <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, he's just shooting the shit. Yeah. And then he's like, and then that plane goes by. Yeah. And he's like, "Nah, that's uh, that's odd." <laughs> and Gary Grant being Gary Grant. Like, What's odd? <laughs> uh, that plane's dusting crops. You're like, yeah, so? Well, it's dusting crops, but well, there's no crops. <laughs> and then he gets on his bus and leaves. And of course, when the guy's gone, the plane's like, <laughs> yeah, you see like a long shot. Yeah, you just see a shot with a plane. And it's about a 10 minute show. You just, <laughs> and he's just like standing there, like, what the hell? <laughs> and he starts running. Yeah, he starts running. And it's a classic scene. Oh, but, it's a great scene. But yeah. you have to think that's the most classic scene in one of Hitchcock's uh, library of films. Mm-hmm. And you're thinking, why the fuck did they choose yeah. to kill him with a plane? <laughs> How come, they're in the middle of nowhere. They could have yeah. got somebody to meet him there, take, yeah. take him off in that, in that cornfield, and yeah. cap his ass. And, and all I'm thinking is like, okay, are they trying to kill him with the blades? I mean, that, that's what I thought. Well, they're shooting like, at him. Well, yeah. Oh, did they no, shoot at him? They did shoot at him. Well, first they tried to run him over. They tried to run him over with the plane. I guess, I guess they tried to use the, the propeller to kill him. And then like later on, all of a sudden they start using a gun. And you can't really <laughs> determine because as soon as the, the plane flies away, now you don't know if there's another guy in that plane shooting or what, but obviously he's being shot at. So he's running all over the place. He's he's diving into the crop. <laughs> and then they use like the, the, the dust and the crop duster. They use that to, to, to get him out. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, is, it's, it's like, like they, they could have been a much. And on top of yeah. that, they hired the lousiest pilot because oh my God, he, yeah. Cary Grant runs towards a truck. <laughs> and it's the, the, the pilot, I guess he's like literally just following him because he crashes <laughs> into the truck. Yeah, and it looks like he, his whole mission was to crash in that <laughs> truck because there's no, there's no reason. There's no, I mean, you watch the scene. There's no reason why he just slams right into the back of his tanker truck. Yeah, it's, it's like a, it's, it's a it's, fuel it's like a, truck. It's a fuel truck. Yeah, and you just you see all of a sudden it's like for a split second he like loses control of the plane. He's like, meep, meep, meep. <laughs> and you see the, the funny thing. Okay, now now to set this up, the funniest thing is that Cary Grant he's trying to hail down. He's trying to stop the fuel truck. Right? He yeah. He sees the fuel truck coming. He's waving it down. Stop! Stop! And the truck's like, meep, meep, meep. The truck has no intentions on stopping, and it. Practically runs him over, and he's yeah. underneath the truck. Oh, that's and as right. Soon as he's underneath the truck. The plane just me me me, and it's just like a gust of wind or something takes control, <laughs> and that fucking plane just goes right into the tank. And, that's a and dude that was up. Yeah, he was dedicated. And, 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 and the thing is, the, the funny thing is that the plane explodes as soon as it hits the tank, and but. Thank God the guys in the truck are still all right. Everybody in front of the in, that who are in the, the in the truck are fine. They all jump out and they're like, "Let's get the hell out of here!" It's and they're explode. looking they're like, "Oh, yeah. it's fire! <laughs> it's a fire!" <laughs> and I guess that pilot was like way dedicated to his job. He's like, "I, I got to die com- to kill com- this motherfucker." Kamikaze pilot, or something. yeah. But I'm like, "Kamikaze!" Why, why don't you at least hit the part of the truck where the guy is at? <laughs> you had a gun. Shoot the tank. <laughs> yeah, and blow that something. shit up. Yeah. God. Yeah, it, it, it makes no sense. Fuck that movie. That movie yeah. ain't a classic now. <laughs> fuck it. Hitchcock was stupid. <laughs> no, I, I still love that movie, man. No, That's it's, one of the greatest great soundtracks that I've ever... I've had the soundtrack to that movie. Yeah. Love that movie to death. It, it is funny, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see what we got here. Next. Uh, next. Next. Let's see. Oh, oh, no, no. Oh, they ask what, what are other ways to kill a person? Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. I, I, I was just, real them. quick, I would just say uh, there's a lot of James Bond movies where people have made fun of that fact where they, look, they got one movie, uh, Goldfinger, where mm-hmm. they tie James Bond up and they have a laser going towards his crotch <laughs> yeah. and while, the, while the villain sits up there and explains. And I'm like, he explains the, you know yeah, something? Entire, yeah. You got a gun. I mean, you know the <laughs> motherfucker's going to come back. Shoot right. his ass. That's shoot like, him. Yeah. yeah. Don't don't talk to him. Don't tell him your whole plan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ego. Ego always gets the supervillain down, Classic. man. Yeah. Don't explain shit. All right. Do you Just... expect me to talk? No, Mister Bond. I expect you to die. <laughs> at least, hey, at least we got that line out. Yeah, that good. Was yeah. Worth it. <laughs> All right. Let's see. What we got here next. Okay. Oh, here's one. Mm-hmm. Hey, Corey. Here's another question for Coco. If you were to remake a movie you thought was a fuck up. 
would you remake it into a better film and why? Well, yeah, if I was going to remake well, it. No, I'd remake yeah, it to a worse it. movie. I want it to be terrible. <laughs> no, I want it to be worse than the movie I'm remaking. I don't want it to be shit. No. Okay. My personal choice would be to remake Aragon because it was such a great story and has such a shitty movie that it would deserve to be remade. Hey, that's from my friend, the Canadian movie guru. Oh, well, hey, you the movie guru. You question. can make whatever you want to. Look at that guy. Yeah. Uh, this Aragon. Is going, Aragon. Aragon was the movie about the dragon. The boy who finds oh, a dragon and he becomes right, like the, right. the legendary dragon writer. Isn't that based off a book, though? It's based off a series of books written at first initially by a uh, 15-year-old yeah. kid, I think. Oh, that's right. But this is going to seem kind of arrogant on my part. Oh. But if uh, – I and, and look, this is no different from what anybody else says. It's just one of those movies where I thought about how much better it could have been made mm-hmm. and, how, and, and the weight that was behind it. Yeah. Uh, the Star Wars prequels. Oh, yeah. I would go back. And honestly, there's a oh, lot yeah. of movies I could say I would go back and remake, but that's the one I would say. Hey. One of my one of my biggest dreams is that somebody down the road will have the guts to actually convince 20th Century Fox to remake the prequels. And yes. That would be amazing. Yeah. That would be true. Mm-hmm. Uh, look, I'm not even saying me. If, if, if anybody said, Corey, your dream job, mm-hmm. you know, here, I'm going to give you this much money to mm-hmm. remake any movie you want to. Yep. We'll go back and remake the Star Wars prequel. I agree. But I I'm really hoping agree. that somebody will actually do it one day like you said. I agree with you totally. Mm. So mm. there you go. I hope it happens. <clears throat> yeah. I, I would love me please, somewhere down the line. <laughs> let me be let me be eighty years old yeah. and just let me see people come back and do it right. Make Darth Vader cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> make him Instead cool of again. making them Yeah, exactly. They, <laughs> Darth Vader ain't <laughs> shit now, you know? know. Now we see Darth like, Vader and we imagine who's behind that mask and yeah. we're like I, well, you know, it's sad when I see uh, Darth Vader on, uh, what is it, Soul Calibur? One of those games, one of those oh, fighting fuck games. fuck me, man. Like, yeah. Is that Darth Vader on a Soul Calibur game? I'm like, nah, yeah, whatever. What happened to him? <laughs> All right. We have a couple more here. All right, let's do it. Okay. This is from, okay, I'm going to read this. He's new here. All right. My name is Frank. Hi, Frank. Hello, Frankie. <laughs> And he says, I'm, <laughs> and I'm new to spill. And I have a couple of questions that you could use in a couple of cold ones, which is what we're doing now. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on making a Jurassic Park 4 movie? I would like to know this uh, because, uh, wait a minute, what did he say? Okay, he says, I would like this, but only if Spielberg could direct it because Jurassic Park 3 was very weak. Boy, have I got something to say to you. And uh, (laughs) question two, what do you think about the talks of Spider-Man 4 and 5 being shot at the same time? And Toby and Sam might have already signed on for it. Uh, uh, Well, they have signed Mm -hmm. on for it. So uh, he goes on to say, uh, for me, Spidey 3 was garbage. I remember walking out of the movie with me and my sister, and we both didn't have anything to say about it. We were in shock. I would even... He said, I, "He said I, I would buy to collect to, to complete my collection, but uh, okay, he didn't like the movie. I don't need to read all the yeah. rest of that shit. I get <laughs> he it. didn't have the guts <laughs> to buy it. Is that what he said? I don't know. What he, I, okay. I, don't, I don't care after that point. Yeah. But anyway, <clears throat> uh, Frank, l- uh, let me tell you something, man. You're talking about Jurassic Park three. Go back yeah. and, ju- and watch Jurassic Park two. Jurassic Park three was actually an improvement over two. Yeah, two was fucking ridiculous. It was ridiculous. I, and I, I'm one of those people in, the, in those camps that I thought part three was honestly." I thought it was better than the first two. I mean, it, it, it was. It I was. Mean, I mean, yeah. the first one's only better because it's yeah. It's, it's the, the first original. time. It's yeah. the first. Yes, the original is directed by Spielberg. You see the dinosaurs for the first time. Exactly. Like somebody brought them to life. Yeah, that you give a lot of credit. But as far as just being excited about seeing dinosaurs run wild, uh, part three was the one that did it for me because it's everything that I wanted to see those dinosaurs do, and you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, it, it just thrilled me uh, from the start to finish. I mean, yeah, it's not a perfect movie. And it's Tia, not a perfect movie. Tia no. Leone in that movie is, uh, is is fucking annoying. She is. She is really annoying. And the fact that they're going to look for another kid, I'm thinking, right. come on, let's right. drop that shit. That I mean, kid, the kids get lost yeah. in that <laughs> island, all right? Yeah, and the kids like Batman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, let me <laughs> tell you something. Like saving lives if a kid that, is trapped on, on an island full of man eating dinosaurs, that kid's gone. All right, He's gone, that motherfucker yeah. ain't gonna he, live. He doesn't turn into Batman. Yeah, he has like smoke smoke grenades. <laughs> and, you know, he's swinging off vines. I don't know. Maybe like, he's like wow. the young Bruce Wayne or something. He, he, well, that's pretty he's, much. He's a young Tony Stark. That's he's all I there. thought. I was like, damn, it's like little Bruce Wayne running around. MacGyver. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. He knows what he's doing. He's a genius. Yeah. And that's how he became a superhero. He exactly. survived the dinosaurs. But no, look, Jurassic Park 4, all I would say is let's cut out some of the elements that people say they don't like about the previous ones. Let's cut out the little kid shit. Yeah, all exactly. Right? Let's, cut the, let's cut all that out. Mm-hmm. Let's see some really cool dinosaurs in this. Let's just go nuts with it. Yeah. All right? I mean, let's, yeah. we know the dinosaurs are there. Mm-hmm. And you've already made... A 
couple of shitty movies. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Jurassic Park is a great movie, but the script ain't that strong. Yeah, but it's a great movie. Don't give me it's, it's it nostalgic is. for me. I saw yeah. the movie five times in the theater. Mm-hmm. But Jurassic Park two, fucking garbage, man. It was terrible. It was and, terrible. and I would say it was one of those things where Spielberg. If I was to see Spielberg and he I'm, look, I wouldn't come in and just say Spielberg, <laughs> your movie suck. I'd What's be like, wrong with uh, you? Uh, Mr. Spielberg, sir, man, permission to speak, please. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think I would actually tell him if we would like sit down having a beer. I'd be like, mm. and he asked, I'd be like, man, Jurassic Park two is a movie that you pretty much shit out yeah you phoned it in i mean you were working on schindler's list at the same time yeah. and that's and his problem care. though i mean i thought he did the same thing with uh uh war of the worlds and war of the worlds working came on out munich. Around, around munich and yeah. munich was by far a superior film oh my god munich was so, great yeah, man yeah. and then war of the worlds film. i'm like man come on this one is, stop yeah. making two movies and at that, the same I time i know it's like that was phoned in yeah yeah he ain't fooling nobody but, uh, that's a paycheck exactly so i mean i I would love to see them make another Jurassic Park. I, I don't even know if the audience, uh, if people really care to see another Jurassic Park film. But um, it, it would be nice to see them take at least the good elements that they had in that third film I mean, and remember yeah. that, you know? Look, a Jurassic Park movie is not that special now. Why? Because we've seen so yeah, much shit yeah, with exactly. dinosaurs, yeah. dragons, monsters. Chlor- Chlorophyll. I Chlor- mean, yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, we see yeah. monsters all the time now. Yeah. Jurassic Park was incredible because that's the first time we saw dinosaurs yes. on screen. Yeah. I actually almost teared up when I no, first I, I saw I did dinosaurs. too. When I, like, I saw that, fuck. I was like, wow. I was really blown away. But, you know. Through the test of time, though, I mean, it's it's you know, there's some there's some bad dialogue yeah. going on in that. So film. Th- really, I I'm would not say try to ignore that. You know, unless Jurassic Park can really, really, really give us something incredible, mm-hmm. and they would really have to go out their way to make it something special. Exactly. Uh, don't nobody give a shit. Yeah, and you like know, you said, Eric. How, how, how many scenes can you do with raptors chasing people? Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't feel like you're watching Aliens or something. You know, <laughs> exactly. You know, they, yeah. they, that's and that's the problem with these movies. Mm-hmm. With these movies, they really haven't. Except for the addition of a few dinosaurs, mm-hmm. they really haven't expanded with character or story mm-hmm. development. It's yeah. the same fucking thing story wise yeah. over and over again. It is. Fuck a Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shit, I ain't give fucking. Give me a dead. movie. <laughs> and you know how they got the basketball team, the Raptors? Yeah. Give me a movie with, a bas- with, the, va- with the Velociraptors playing basketball. <laughs> yeah. some shit. They, they're so smart, they can yeah. slam dunk now. Dinosaurs in space, Corey. That's what I see. <laughs> That's the future. <laughs> they were talking about one time, they had a comic book series out. Where they actually had the mafia using dinosaurs as uh, as assassination weapons. <laughs> I'm not fucking lying, man. Wow. I, I, I mean, look, what at this hell? point, <laughs> a couple of years ago, I'd been like, "That's fucking stupid. Get out of my face yeah. with that shit." But now I'm thinking, "Look, where else you got to go? Yeah. <laughs> let's try it. At least let's see what happens." The Godfather with dinosaurs. That would be awesome. <laughs> You'll come to me. Asking me and my raptors for a favor. <laughs> the day of my raptors' wedding. <laughs> you use my raptors as an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, I, I really Jurassic Park. Uh, as far as Spider-Man goes, yeah, I was Spider-Man. very disappointed uh, with Spider-Man. 3. I was terribly disappointed with Part Three, and I know there's a lot of people who you know would disagree with us, but I'm sorry. It lacked the character. It lacked everything that I loved about the first two Spider Mans. Mm-hmm. It it almost turned into a Batman and Robin towards the end for me. I mean, it 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 just was a little too. It just was a little too goofy. A lot of the character mm-hmm. motivations didn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. And, and having that goddamn butler at the end show up out of nowhere to oh, explain you know everything. what happened what oh. happened to his father. Yeah, to to Harry Osborn explain to him. You know, it's not your your father. You know, his wounds were. You know, he's explaining him that what happened to his father, and it makes him turn his. It's almost like yeah. that really terrible scene in yeah. Batman and Robin when Alfred came out. Yeah, yeah I'm a computer program, and I'm hey. gonna explain. No, uh, really, look, people, I'm not trying to be this me versus you in Spider-Man no, 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 Three. No. I'm really, I'm trying not to no. do that. What I'm telling you is, look at story structure in that movie. Mm-hmm. Look at it, characterization in that movie. Yeah. Uh, Peter Parker is not the same character. No, as I mean that that whole scene. With him jive walking down the street, and was, I mean it's silly. It, it is, is, and it doesn't fit within the it world takes that they you out of the, the movies. That scene movies. took me out of the goddamn movie. Yeah, and I was uh, really like, why are they doing this? I mean, yeah. I know people want to sit up there and defend the movie in a way that, well, you're talking about this movie, so I'm gonna take a stronger stance defending it. Right. I would say, just take yourself out. Of, I was mad enough to take myself out of Lakeview Terrace and say, look, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm telling people, take yourself out of Spider-Man 3. Yeah. And look, if you can really give me re- reasons why you like it, what can I say? It's all mm-hmm. opinion. If you like yeah. it, you like it. But I've seen some inconsistencies with people yeah. who know better and know better structure and have complaints about certain movies that they won't apply to this film. Right. I'm saying you're just in love with Spider-Man. I know. <laughs> and that's and that's the sad part about that because – 
you're not, you know, you're not, you're not, you're making excuses. It's like, you know, you're making excuses for that movie that you shouldn't be making. Yeah. I mean, it's just not, it's not a well-structured film by any means. I mean, my problem with that movie is that that movie was basically created by a committee. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was, it was just a big committee, uh, assembled by the people who were at Avi Arad. I, I, I put a lot of the blame on him because of his insistence, uh, you know, uh, badgering Sam Raimi over his head to put Venom in there, mm-hmm. where Sam Raimi did, had no desire to put that character in there whatsoever. And you watch that film, and you can easily see that he was basically just thrown in that film. I yes. mean, there's there's nothing that motivates his character uh, to be in that film besides he's the bad guy. He's just a bad guy, and he wants to destroy Spider Man, Sandman. That that it started off. He started off as a prominent character, and and, and you actually sympathize with him. For a bit until the rest of the movie went along and you just – he was kind of like a throwaway character all of a sudden. And you're like, why do you build up all the story around this character if you're not going to do a goddamn thing with him? Mm-hmm. Only at the end, you know, to have a scene where Peter Parker's crying. That's a much – yeah, before I, before I go off on a tangent here, why does every goddamn character in that movie have to cry like a bitch throughout that whole movie? You I think, mean – I've only seen that movie once. I had no real desire uh, to see that's, it again, No, right? no, no. I, I saw it once, but there are a lot of things that really stuck to me like – Then they all every, crying, huh? They were all fucking weeping like babies and especially at the end where the Sandman committed all these crimes and Spider-Man was just like, I'm sorry this happened to you and he lets him go. I'm like, well, well what, why? There's no reason for it. Well, they're all a bunch of pussies in the movie. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, but the thing is, yeah, the movie was made by a committee. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, uh, there was no thought into the characterizations of it, and it was kind of thrown together. Yeah, and no, that's my it, problem. It was. Yeah, and, it's, and I'm it is, hoping yeah. at least if they're going to do a part four and five, that Sam Raimi will realize, you know, uh, the faults of the last movie. And we'll improve on that. I think he's a competent director to do that. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully, you know, I, I hope they're I hope they're great. I hope yeah. they're great films. Yeah. Right? Let's, I don't. I don't go to a Spider-Man movie hoping that it's going to be terrible. Yeah, no, you're right. Uh, we got one more question here. We'll make it quick. Okay. All right. This is from John in Jacksonville, and John says, "I was just wondering if you could enlighten me about the electric boogaloo that the co-host three thousand keeps referring to." <laughs> <laughs> now you want to explain? Somebody's paying attention. <laughs> yeah. Hey, is there, people want to know. Well, do you, do you want to tell them or? I, I mean, I can tell him real quick. Yeah, it's, real it's, quick. okay. The, no, Electric Boogaloo comes from the sequel to a movie called Breaking. Breaking. Yeah, yes. now Breaking is the quintessential breakdance movie. Yes, it, it basically cashed in on the big breakdancing craze. That, the, yeah, the craze that everyone was doing. White kids were doing it. Everyone was trying to do it. Yeah, at the time yeah. when, they, when, they made, when they hit mainstream, Breaking came into being and. So, and we're talking about breaking, not breaking. Yeah, break, it has like, breaking. At the, it yeah. ends with an N and an apostrophe. Yeah. So, <laughs> now breaking was released in May of 1984. Now, 1984. Yeah, so in December of 1984. Yeah, the sequel came the out. The sequel came out. Which was breaking entitled, two. yeah, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and <laughs> that is such a weird suffix for a movie to have, Electric yeah. Boogaloo. I mean, it works great for the movie because it rhymes and it's just oh, it's, yeah. it's catchy. I it's, mean, It's so catchy, I'm still using it today. Corey. Well, it's catchy Every that scene. a lot of people use it. I mean, it's, it's a, it was... Um, it's one of those things where people just now it, it's now used as a silly catchphrase for yeah. anybody who wants to refer to making fun of a sequel, mocking right. a sequel. We're making a sequel to a movie that doesn't need a sequel. Right. We're making a sequel and just making a joke about it. So like and, that's, and and right, that's what you always do. Exactly. And rightfully so, because it's it's the perfect sequel name. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. So now you hear it joked around a lot. You're not going to just hear it from us. Mm-hmm. But I just now realize that a lot of kids out there might not they might not know where Electric Boogaloo comes from. Oh, they'll know. They'll know now. They'll know now. So, God yeah, damn it. Go and go. I'm sure right now uh, if you go and you try to find that DVD, uh, I think you can also find it in like a two pack. Where oh, with, it's, it's, with breaking, it's, it's one DVD with breaking on one end, on one side, breaking two on the other side. Electric Boogaloo, Electric Boogaloo, uh, yeah, with the adventures of Kelly, Ozone, and Turbo. I know. <laughs> yeah, the here's three, the name. Yeah. It, it was. Uh, <laughs> let me see, because it was. You had a. Uh, you had a. Uh, uh, well, Kelly. Okay, well, Kelly was special K, K. K. Kelly was yeah, special K. And then you had then you had a, a real breakdancer uh, named Shabadoo, Shabadoo as Ozone, <laughs> yeah. and then you had Boogaloo Shrimp. Yeah. As Turbo, 
Mm-hmm. And, and then you had uh, Sir Peter O'Toole as Booger Nose Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I just mean. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, it, it got a lot of stars him. in that movie, man. <laughs> Re- Richard right. Attenborough as uh, Onion Head Larry. <laughs> yes. And everyone, you should go on YouTube and look for the turbo dancing where he's dancing uh, all over this house he's cleaning up the house and oh he's that's, doing this he does, awesome dance with a broom it's, yeah, and he's like dancing on the ceiling it's it's a reference to uh fred astaire yes and i forgot what movie that he did it in but he, uh-huh. he danced all over the room as yeah. a matter of fact lionel richie did a takeoff on fred astaire's uh dancing on the ceiling too there you go uh, mm-hmm. with his move with his video uh, uh dancing on the roof or something like that i don't know i, I don't know <laughs> i think right. it's called dancing on the ceiling too. dancing on the ceiling yeah but anyway dancing fred. on the ceiling <laughs> yeah that, that that's it exactly yeah. that's, that's, that's just how a lot of richie sounds yeah dancing on the ceiling <laughs> right on richie but uh the tur- turbo does it better yeah <laughs> but yeah it's 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 an homage to that fred yeah. astaire film i wish i could remember what it was but i i i, I can't yeah. so uh, yeah check out breaking two that's a great film the the break, break dancing uh, and that's crew. you know they, something they try to save a rec center that's what yeah. everybody when it says yeah. oh in this movie do they try to save the rec center <laughs> yeah. they're referring to uh electric boogaloo yes breaking uh-huh. two that's, electric that's boogaloo the plot and uh, and they and yeah and they uh, you could you need to check out the film to see if they do or not <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're not gonna tell you no we're not gonna spoil uh, it for you not, uh, we no spoilers here people <laughs> we are not Leog. <laughs> <laughs> now, while we are, well, we're, near the, we're at the end of the show. Oh, I um, no, uh, no, we're having a good epic time here. Five hours. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't been that long. It's been the sun's coming up around. Yes, but before we go out, when I was when I, I just want to look at some clips from mm-hmm. from Breaking because I was like, wow, man, it's been a long time since I've seen that movie. So I went on YouTube, yeah, and uh, and start looking at some clips from the movie, and then on the side they had things that might relate to this yeah one of the things that i found mm. was carlton 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 from the fresh prince oh, alfonso yeah. rivera <laughs> that dude i remember when i was a little kid man he yeah. had a he had a, a commercial out yeah talking about break dancing oh my god it's like you he had a break he had okay it was called breaking and popping and right. it was like a breaking and popping kit all right here let me look this up real quick. now imagine right. alfonso rivera who's Pretty much the whitest black guy that we know now. Imagine him <laughs> being like about portrayal of Carlton. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now imagine him being like twelve years old. Yeah, talking about breaking. Oh, yeah. he, he's, he has his Michael Jackson uh, Thriller Wolfman jacket yeah. on. There you go. Okay, I, I know exactly what you're talking about now. Yeah, yeah. I got the video up here, people. Uh, before we yeah. go out, I'm just gonna close the show with this. I want y'all to, I want y'all to hear this because this was. Uh, <laughs> This was this was a commercial. Right. This was the commercial back then. Like you be watching cartoons in the middle yeah. of the day, mm-hmm. and Alfonso Rivera's ass comes yeah. on. Do you want to learn how to break and pop? <laughs> I can show you. I can show you all the great moves that I had. <laughs> hey, how do you think I became the great dancer that I am today? <laughs> I, I'll even give you some cardboard to do it with. <laughs> I know you give him some card. He, he's gonna give you with some cardboard with his face on it. Yeah, you it has see a the cartoon corner, the, face. Yeah, on. the corner of the cardboard is his face. <laughs> oh I mean, when you get that shit free at it, ain't it like uh, yeah. eight, in like the back of a grocery store? Exactly. You know, you can get some cardboard. He's like, but no, pay for mine. It has my face on it. And that whole thing was like twenty bucks. Came with a LP and all, <laughs> all kinds of shit. <laughs> Came with the wall instructions. You put. Put it, post it up on your wall to learn all. And the I moves. love it that he's trying to talk in it. I'm gonna play it for you, but he's talking right, like yeah. with a fake with a fake Brooklyn accent. I'll even send you some cardboard to put on your wall. Put on your wall. <laughs> it's like like a little <laughs> Mike Tyson. Right. You want to know how to break? I'll show you how. <laughs> break dance on your wall. <laughs> But I like the way he said, it's the safe way to break and pop. Oh. Not like the dangerous kind you see people on the streets doing. Yeah, the kind I was doing. Yeah, exactly. Do <laughs> <laughs> That's dangerous, kids. <laughs> there have been several injuries and neck breaks trying to break dance. I won't let you do it. You can become great like me, a great <laughs> dancer. <laughs> okay, okay, before we go out, let's go ahead and take a look at this, this, uh, this video right here. Yeah. Alfonso Rivera's so uh, break dancing, break breaking and popping, kick. breaking and popping. Yeah. What's the pop? What's the popping part, Corey? You're gonna be popping your neck when you're trying to do these damn moves. Popping your joints out of limb. I know he's no trained professional, Corey. Yeah, exactly. As a matter of fact, well, I'll talk about it after we get through with this. Take a look at this. I'll listen to it, and and people you can find it on YouTube. Moves like the moonwalk or the king turned. 
all right here in a breaking and popping book. Almost a hundred pages that simply and clearly take you through the moves. In a few minutes, you could be doing backspins that will flip out your friends or eye popping moves like the centipede. The centipede! <laughs> My step by step guide starts with the basics, but takes you all the way to tough moves like the windmill. It's all right here in my easy-to-follow book. And tell mom and dad it's the safe way to break and pop, not the things you shouldn't try. Mm -hmm, my mm -hmm. book comes a fold-out breaking board, carried around to give you a huge 65 by 70 safe dancing area anywhere. Wow. Can you rap? Well, there's even a full rap sheet included. Well, you rap. Plus, the construction <laughs> poles that hang on the wall. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Yep, you get my book. Fold up breaking board, rap sheet, and instruction poster. Plus, you get the Post. right kind of music. Rap attack. Hey, if you like volume one, volume two is radical. Yeah. <laughs> Red. You get my breaking and popping book, the rap sheet, instruction poster, a fold up breaking board, plus the double album rap attack, all for under. 20 bucks. 20 bucks? <laughs> right, oh, this For COD and credit card orders, call 1 800 453 8500. Save the COD charges by sending $19.99 plus $3 shipping and handling to Break It and Poppin'. 443 West 50th Street, New York. Alfonso's Break It offer is great for all ages. Have your mom or dad order now. Give me the phone. <laughs> Can you rewind it back to that part where that guy comes in? Because that's the best part. He's like, that's right, Alfonso. <laughs> did, did he say that? Yeah. What, let, me, let me hear that. Wait, what part? At the very end. Oh, uh, okay. There you go. Wait a minute. Here you go. Here you go. Back here you go. <laughs> Alfonso's right. <laughs> Alfonso's right. <laughs> Alfonso's right. God damn it. <laughs> He's they, always right. They got a number on here, by the way, that they call. I, I would like to call that number right now. <laughs> Don't. I'm not going to call it now. But. <laughs> you're going to end up, you're gonna end up in, a penis pump. Damn, how you know I'm not looking for one? Anyway, <laughs> look, man, it's funny because in that video, that mm -hmm. goddamn video, he he's talking about, I can teach you how to do this and that. Yeah. He ain't doing any of that shit. I know. You don't see... <laughs> Barely see him doing the moonwalk. Like he, the moonwalk. He, well, all, he, no, he, <laughs> all he does is walk. I can teach you how to yeah. walk out and sell some cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was a That's when everybody was on the break and shit. Oh, I yeah. remember. I remember seeing a a, 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 a news reel or a, sorry news story where they had, they showed a video of like middle aged white women trying to learn how to break dance, uh, taught by some goddamn African and guy. You know that at that point that trend was over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean breaking's back now, but that back then it was like, man, okay, I won't do this shit yeah. no more. <laughs> I always had this man, it's gonna sound stupid. I always mm -hmm. had this fantasy. Like yeah. when I was when I was a kid, like I would be the break dance ninja. <laughs> like 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 I would <laughs> so break stupid. Man? Okay. Now listen this, when I was like when I was a little kid, I had this this fantasy that I would I would be the nerdy kid that nobody liked because oh, I was kind of like that and and then at the at the school dance I would I would disappear and I'd be like um, excuse me I have to go and I'd leave uh -huh. and then I'd go and change and I bust into the to the dance room as in a ninja costume but I'd be breaking <laughs> that was the best break dancer and then when I, when everybody's like oh, damn who is that guy I'd never seen moves like that wow I, I, I would get up and disappear and all the girls are like <laughs> oh my god who, who was, was that, that guy <laughs> who, who was that mass marauder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I come back in and be like, "What happened? What what happened? I heard noise." And be oh like, "Oh, you God. missed it, Corey. The the breakdancing ninja was here. <laughs> he was here again. <laughs> bless us, bless us with his moves." <laughs> <laughs> and then and then you woke up, Corey, with your glasses on, and you know, somebody shooting spit wads at you. <laughs> Wake up, oh, Coleman. Uh, <laughs> Lunch money, Coleman. Time to take out the trash. You're not doing nothing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, that's the that's the show, everybody. Uh, next week we want to talk about it this week, but it's we're, we're gone long, yeah, so too long. Yeah, <laughs> next week we're going to talk about uh, some stuff we saw at Fantastic Fest. Yes, like, Fantastic I, Fest. I saw like the mainstream stuff. You saw cool stuff. Like, I, I saw some cool. Shit, I saw yes. Zach and Miriam make a porno and Eagle mm -hmm. Eye and uh, uh, what was it, Fanboys? But you mm -hmm. saw. Some I saw stuff. an incredible film, a CG uh, animated film called Terra, mm -hmm. and a uh, Turkish Danish. I want to say I think it was a Dutch film mm -hmm. uh, called Fighter. 
uh, dealing with a female uh, Turkish Dutch uh, teenager who has a passion for martial arts, but really? due to her family, yeah, they won't allow it. Uh, uh, so and and it was, Tara, it was what was great, Tara about? Tara, okay, Tara was basically about. Um, uh, humans uh, basically trying to colonize this like planet. Like terraform? Yeah, they're trying to colonize this planet that was already inhabited, and uh, the humans at this point uh, turn hostile towards the planet. So it's interesting to see how you know the human race is depicted as... Uh, the villain? The villain, yeah. And uh, it was an, an incredible-looking film. The visuals uh, were stunning. Uh, the, the designs of the vehicles and the characters were amazing and... Uh, it was honestly, it was everything I was hoping Wally would be, you know, as far as uh, the story that I wanted to see. Yeah. And it was just an incredible film. I, I don't know if it has a distributor yet. I hope it does because uh, it, it definitely does deserve uh, to be seen. It, it, wow. it, it's just an incredible film. Uh, and, and it takes the whole idea of war and, you know, just uh, how we handle our issues, especially right now and mm-hmm. with the war going on and, and about the environment. Uh, it, it takes a lot of those issues and it doesn't beat you over the what head. What country with it is it from? Uh, this is made in Canada. Actually. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, um, uh, a lot of great uh, a lot of great actors are actually the voice actors in this. Like who? Uh, Brian Cox. Oh, um, um, oh what's her name? Uh, I'm, forget- I'm forgetting her name right now. Uh, Rachel. Um, Rachel Wood, uh, mm-hmm. uh, she's in this. Uh, she plays one of the voices. Um, and, um, oh, God, I'm already, hold on. Uh-oh. Searching into your computer. Yes. Uh, Brian Cox, uh, Luke Wilson, uh, David Cross. David Cross plays this little android that's really awesome. So do you think that it will um, possibly be given a wide release here? It should. <laughs> it really should, honestly. Uh, and uh, as you know, as visually stunning it w- as it was, uh, it's one of these films that uh, I think adults will truly love it, mm-hmm. uh, as well as kids. Um, and it deals with a lot of issues that you know uh, some of these CG animated features you know put out by pixar would be a little too afraid to touch upon i think yeah 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 but uh it was it was just an amazing film and uh damn you got me really i, I really to it, yeah i mean you, yeah i i can't praise this film highly enough um it, it hopefully everyone will get to see it really soon i'll try to do that man yeah just real quick uh i saw like zach and mary i think zach and mary make a porno mm-hmm. um funny in some parts but forgettable Oh, uh, mm-hmm. Again, it's, I think it's Kevin Smith trying too hard to be oh, edgy really? and, and, and sort of uh, even offensive in a way. Oh, really? Uh, so yeah. I keep hearing people refer to like it's as good as uh, Chasing Amy, but it's I, it's one of the best things he's come out with in years. But that, that but to it, me, it's, it's still not that great. It's, it's not just, that great. It's, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, there's some parts in there where I laughed. It was funny, but mm-hmm. I, I didn't think it was really like I said I, I, when I left. I was like, huh? It's just okay it's really and, mm-hmm. and, and really I, i'm not going to remember this movie it's, mm-hmm. and it seemed like some parts were really stretching to be just to be uh to have that offensive kind of humor yeah. uh there's one part in that movie that the funny the one the part i remember the most is uh one of the most disgusting parts of the movie it's not even <laughs> like it's not even now that funny it's mm-hmm. just kind of like damn they went there yeah uh but hey i got uh, J- justin long probably is a character i left at the most in the movie oh really yeah he, he, he he's, comes in and plays a great role i won't ruin it what he does but okay. he's justin long is a guy from the mac commercials and the mm-hmm. cool he's the mac guy in there well, do you know the release date uh, is that supposed to come out i think out it's soon? like in october or something oh really okay uh awesome. yeah uh fanboys i saw <laughs> fanboys is great How is that? fanboy uh yeah. it's fun it's actually it starts out Starts out kind of annoying because look, I've heard every Star Wars quotable that is out right. there, and that's what this movie does. And I don't, mm. I don't need to hear anymore. Right. But as it goes along, it gets a little funny. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, it's it's still I don't think a great movie. Yeah. But it's if you're a fanboy, you'll you're the you're the target audience for it. I'm not really part of fanboy culture, but right. uh, yeah, near the, it it turns out to be it turns out to be all right. Okay. I won't say it's great, but. Well, I guess we'll we'll wait till next week and we'll yeah we'll wait till we'll next week and see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, hopefully we'll. we'll I, I know I plan on seeing more of the films uh, during the week, so uh, I'll be sure to let you know which ones were worth the shit. So. Yeah, because I, I I just don't have time to go there anymore. I got to yeah. go out of town this week. So yeah, tell me what you see, man. Yeah, yeah. Thanks definitely. for recommending Terra. I want. I no, really want to yes. try to find that movie. So man. Everyone, yeah. Hope I'm hoping to God uh, it'll find a distributor if it hasn't already. But, yeah, uh, it should. It will. Okay, uh, it's a great film. All right, y'all. Well, that was a long show. We didn't know it was going to be that long. Sorry. You know, Sorry. what we say? We, we <laughs> yeah. sit here, we lose track of time. We have a good time. So. We don't plan on it ever being long. We but do, we, we, do, we, do, we do. Things happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Deal with it, shit. All right, y'all. We'll talk to you later. All right. Be cool.